we've invited some guest speakers to come on as part of these events to make sure that people in the local community can get people who care about freedom who are coming to these events involved and plugged in. So we have a couple guest speakers and I'm really excited first to bring up Sarson. He was uh, instrumental in getting us this venue and bringing this event together. He's been active in freedom fighting for several years, founded Lehigh Valley Cop Block. Can we hear a round of applause for Cop Block? in Allentown and Layton and is working on a radio show that will be called The Freedom Paradox. It will be launched in January. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Severin. Well, I want to jump off the theme of burning out and working together and just my experience that I've had in this last year and a half, two years of saying no. And that's all I've done. I'm not special. I'm a fat guy with a missing tooth. <laughs> and I managed to make an imprint in the Lehigh Valley so deep that the police are afraid to encounter me. They won't come, they won't encounter me. <laughs> I get phone calls every day of people saying, help, help, help. They're harassing us. They're hurting us. They're forcing us to do things we don't want to do. And my response every time is, who do you think I am, Superman? Pull your camera out and do what I do. Just stand there, shut up, and let them look stupid. Because the state is a parasite. And if you don't feed it, it will just eat itself. We don't have to stand here and fight. We don't have to do any extravagant things. We don't have to make successful YouTube channels. All we have to do is say no. Sit back and let it eat itself. Because as long as we are fighting it and giving it the power to stand on social media and to give it the power that we give it every day over ourselves, we lose. Every time. The thing's too big. We can't stand up to it. Even in this group, I'm sure if we stepped outside and started talking, this group would split up into five different groups. And that's a problem. This group should be united under one flag, and that flag should be no more. We don't want this government. We're not sure if anarchy is the way. We're not sure if libertarianism is the way. We're not sure. That's the point. None of us are sure. But we are sure that the current system is not working. It's unjust. It's unfair and it harms us every single day that we get up and we put ourselves out there into the street. It steals from us, it oppresses us, and it makes people afraid. That is not what this country was supposed to stand for in my eyes. We've been hijacked, ladies and gentlemen. Hijacked, totally hijacked. At one point this country stood for something. It no longer does. My battle, I've burned out more than once. I was the head of the largest cop block group on the East Coast after one year. There were groups 10 years going that haven't even done what I did in one year. We're like 6,000 strong right now. And I gotta tell you, I came into this thinking I would beat them. I'm going to win. I'm smarter, I have better people behind me, and most of all, I'm right. I'm morally right from where I'm standing. They're wrong. And I burned out because that's not the way to fight this battle. We're not going to win with force. We're not going to win with guns. We're not even going to win with protests, guys. We're going to win by living without them. Let them destroy themselves. Let them eat themselves alive while we stand back and smile and hug one another and say, we're together for one purpose. Not for our agendas, not for our channels, not for our publicity, not even for the money that comes from activism, which is very few and far between, by the way. <laughs> uh, we are together for one purpose, and that's to say no more. We can do this. It's being done right there at Freedom Ranch. It's already done. The only thing the government can do is aggress against them at this point. They've already won. They're a peaceful society that's established without government help. Let's keep it going. Let's get one in Philly. Let's get one in the Lehigh Valley and just keep them growing. I heard somebody talking about the Free State Project in uh, New Hampshire. There's another one. Keep it going. 20,000 strong are moving to New Hampshire. Yes, they're far, few and far between, but guess who just got elected the Libertarian Speaker of the House, or Speaker for the New Hampshire area? Daryl Prairie, co-host for Free Talk Live. Libertarians are making a move in this country, and it's strong. And the government is afraid because our points 
are on point. We don't need to use any trickery or any kind of backdoor politic games to be right. Stealing is wrong. Taxation is theft. These things are given. given. There is nothing about these principles that are to be argued with. If you take something without asking, you have stolen. It's what they do to us every day that we pick up our paycheck. So let's stop fighting one another. Let's stop saying that protest is Black Lives Matter. I don't like them. And I've been guilty of this myself. Let's stop saying that protest represents the Republicans or the this and that. If they're going to protest government, let's cheer for them. Stop holding each other down because we are holding each other down. All we have to fight against is each other at this point, guys. I'm going to wrap it up and just... Um, I, I want to touch on some of the things that we've been able to succeed against. City Hall in our town has had to change two different policies due to us and our protests and our fighting them for trying to get people to give IDs and give sign paperwork and things like that to get business done. It was all over the paper. We beat them. That was my first week in activism. All I did was show up outside alone, alone with a sign that says, what do you do when the government doesn't, or what do you do when the politicians don't follow the rules? It got enough attention that they were forced to change their policies. We have the Pennsylvania State Police on the lawsuit right now for illegal arrest. We have exposed countless dirty cops. And all this that it takes is asking the questions, guys. You see somebody doing something wrong, don't let it go. Go the next day into their local office and say, who is this guy? And who, was, who gave him the authority to act that way? Just by us asking these simple questions and not letting things go anymore, we have made this impact that I'm speechless against because I didn't intend to be some kind of leader or have people calling me saying, hey, we have issues. All I want to be is left alone and have my kids not have to worry about being shot if they encounter a cop. This started out as a battle against police for me, and it's turned into so much more because the police are at the bottom. We're just fighting police for no reason. They're the same victims of the same government that we are. They're being forced to do things that they don't like to do, and they lose their jobs if they get fired if they don't do it. So it's not the government figures that are the enemy, it's the guys in the business suits. The guys that are forcing you to vote for them because there's only two parties. So I'm gonna wrap up on this. If you're gonna vote, if you're somebody that's voting, please do not rationalize to yourself voting for a Democrat or a Republican. I don't wanna hear your rationalization. I don't wanna hear the lesser of two evils. You are giving your consent to the same violent system we're fighting if you walk in that booth and put down a check for either one of those parties. I say don't vote at all. But if you're going to vote, if you're going to put your consent on paper so that they can look it up later and say that you participated, participate in a third party. Tell them that their two-party system is bullshit and that you won't do it anymore. That's all I have to say, guys.